In a previous video, I pinpointed holding on as a major cause of runaway stress and suggested that letting go is essential for stress management. However, letting go does not come easy for many of us. One of the few reflexes we're born with is called the Palmer grasp. If you put your finger in the palm of a newborn, she holds on to it and grasps it. We seem to be born with a tendency to hold on, whereas letting go seems to be a learned skill. Here are a few examples of holding on. We hold on to our possessions long after they have served their purpose. We hold on to them in our basements, in our clothes cupboards. And we do the same thing with states of mind and emotions. We hold on to them even when they do not bring us happiness or well-being. Another example of holding on is holding on to our notions and expectations of how people should be and how they should behave, how teenagers should behave, how our partners should be. Acceptance is letting go of those notions and expectations. Holding on to anger is another problem. You can think of forgiveness as a religious virtue if you like, but at the bottom line forgiveness involves letting go of anger. One example of holding on to anger for generations in fact is the story of Romeo and Juliet the enmity between the Capulets and the Montagues was the main reason for the tragedy of Romeo and Juliet and the death of the lovers. We also hold on to familiar states of mind, familiar thoughts, familiar emotions, even when they, they, they do not bring us well-being or happiness. My teacher Thich Nhat Hanh says that we hold on to suffering because it feels familiar. It feels like us. Nostalgia is another word for holding on. People of my generation know the song Yesterday of the Beatles. Yesterday all my troubles seem so far away. And the song gets even more nostalgic as it goes along. I believe in yesterday. Now that song became popular because it spoke of an emotion, a state of mind that we all know. We all know nostalgia. And there's nothing wrong with nostalgia, so long as it doesn't last longer than the duration of that song, about three and a half minutes. But nostalgia becomes a problem when we hang on to it, when we hold on, it, hold on to it for longer than that, for days on end, sometimes for weeks on end. Let go of the past. Let go of nostalgia. That song pinpoints the problem, but it doesn't show us the way forward. Here are a few suggestions for moving on, from holding on to letting go. First of all, we need to develop awareness of what we're holding on to. If you don't know what you're holding on to, there's not much chance that you'll let go of it. Next, consider why you're holding on to that particular state of mind. 
Is it anxiety? Is it fear? Is it love? Knowing the reason helps us to go forward. Here's an example. If you feel anxious about work, it helps to know the reasons why. Then you have a better chance of dealing with those reasons rationally. That, in turn, makes it possible to let go of the emotion. Open up to the present moment. You've heard the mindfulness teaching of be here now. Well, we can't be here now unless we let go of the past, unless we let go of the worries of the past, of the problems of the past. Come to the present with each breath. Keep in mind that habits can be changed. The brain is plastic. But do not expect a long-standing habit that took years to develop, to change, and new habits to take their place just because you want that to happen. In order to form new habits, we must practice them. We must repeat things. Now here, in a nutshell, are a few things you can do specifically to move forward. First, make up your mind. Resolve that this is an important issue for you, that you really want this. Second, be proactive in your thinking. If you catch yourself ruminating, stop it. Come back to the present moment. Let go. Stop holding on to old thoughts. Next, watch how you speak. If you tend to ruminate out loud, stop doing that. And do not participate in conversations where others ruminate out loud. Next, Change your own behavior where that's possible or feasible. You know, the serenity prayer, the, it starts with change what we can. You see, some of our stress is of our own making. And by changing our behavior, we actually change that stress as well. Meditate regularly. And also concentrate. Concentrate on being here, on what's happening here. Here's something I learned from one of the participants in my groups. Can you read? It says, stress basket. Please your, drop your stress here. She told me that she put such a basket in front of her door. And when she came back from work, before she entered her house, she took a few breaths and mentally dropped her work-related stress here instead of taking it inside and dumping it on her partner, on her children. I think that's a very good practice. Imagine for a moment that you're walking on a country road after rain, a dirt road, and there are puddles. You come to a puddle, you don't want to walk in it and wet your shoes, so you jump over it. In order to jump, you stress yourself a little bit, you tighten certain muscles, your heartbeat goes up, your blood pressure goes up. But here's the question. Do you think that after the jump, your stress level comes back to your baseline of relaxed functioning? Or do you think 
there's a little bit of residue left. You see, it's the sympathetic system that primes us for doing things like jumping. And it's the parasympathetic system that relaxes us. The sympathetic system gives us the fight or flight response. The parasympathetic system gives us the relax and digest response. But the problem is that the sympathetic system is more efficient and instantaneous. You see, if a car is careening toward you, you instantly tense your muscles, your blood pressure goes up instantly, and you run away from danger. Your life depends on the sympathetic system. The parasympathetic system, on the other hand, is not as efficient or instantaneous. It is not connected to your survival in the same way. And that's the problem. We need mindfulness to consciously remember to relax. Because for most of us, our day is like a country road full of puddles. First puddle, get the kids ready for school. Next puddle, get, get to work, deal with traffic. Next puddle, problem at work. And it goes on all day. Unless you periodically empty that stress, you may come back home at the end of the day and feel like you just fell off a cliff. One way to do that is to take meditation breaks during the day. You take coffee breaks, don't you? Turn them into meditation breaks. Put your earphones on and listen to a practice song. You can listen at the work cafeteria if there is one. You can take a walk and listen. You can go to your car and listen. There are quite a few practice songs on the website mindfulnessmeditationcenter.org. You can download them freely to your portable device. Make a habit of twice a day, once in the morning, once in the afternoon, listening to a practice song. It only takes three minutes at a time, and it will change your state of mind. It will bring you to a meditative space where you can let go of stress and start anew. Thank you very much for listening to me. Just breathe, just breathe. Everything will be all. Just breathe, just breathe, everything will be fine. Just breathe, just breathe, everything will be alright. Just breathe, just breathe, everything will be fine. Just breathe, just breathe. Everything will be all right. Just breathe, just breathe. Everything will be fine. Everything will be fine.